All right, just kidding about the turning point. Yeah, just maybe kidding about that one. Series. Maybe if they win the series, nobody nobody said they were guaranteeing a sweep. <laughs> um, this was um, pretty boring. I don't know if disappointing is the right word. I mean, probably after last night, the Padres really lay an egg. You know, I thought Joe Musgrove was good, not great. But the offense did nothing. You have a Rosario solo home run, and that was the extent of it. A grand slam from the Cubs kind of broke it open, and you're thinking, is it going to be deja vu all over again? And let me answer that for you. No. Uh, the last team to overcome five-run deficits in consecutive games, the 2017 Angels, and will not be the 2024 Padres to this point. So John and Jim with you on the wrap-up show. Subscribe. Uh, we, how many of you guys subscribed last night? That was incredible. Maybe 60 people or something, Jim, subscribed yesterday. We're pushing towards 6,000. Uh, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, we do appreciate that. We're trying to get to 6,000 this month. Um, how many likes do you want today? Uh, 150 minimum. 150 what did we have minimum. last night? Six, 700, 800? We hit uh, uh, almost 700 likes on the video. I wanted 1,000 after that game, but... I know, it was incredible. Let's get so. to 150 likes. Um, follow us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. We promise you we'll get to all your super chats. We appreciate your support of the channel. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. I'm working on new emojis and badges for the wrap-up show members, by the way. Bogey, Campy, Crony, Shilty. Stay tuned. Become a member by clicking the join button down below. Um, hmm. I mean, what do you say after last night? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, seriously, I mean, first of all, the 705 start, the three hour game, it's 1015 Pacific. We're just starting the wrap up show. I was hoping for more, to be honest. I mean, I, you know, I didn't know if they're going to win, but four hits tonight, a solo home run. That was it. Kind of disappointing, right? Kind of disappointing. Okay, very disappointing, right? Coming off of last night's high and, and following that up with scoring one run. You just knew it was going to happen. And it these types of games in a season happen a, a lot. Like, you're going to see a lot of times they lose 5-1. They, they lose 4-1, right? They lose 5 nothing. Like, the, these games are going to happen this year. It's not like they can never have a game where they lose 5-1. I get that. But just after last night's, last night's win and how they did it, and then you follow that up with a complete boring clunker of a game i mean this game was boring from the padres perspective and joe didn't pitch that great it felt like he was trying to force his way to have his breaking pitches work and they just were not working at all it was i mean my ears were bleeding listening to this broadcast oh we gotta stop with the umpire I, i'm with you I, what's did they win last week with the umpire or lose they lost are they owing two with the umpire they're 0 and 2 with the umpire. He's got to go. That's gotta, enough of a sample go. size. He's got to go. So, not only did the game, from a viewing perspective, watching this team play, it was boring. It also literally made your ears bleed listening He's gotta go. to this ump talk. What What are we we're doing? Hashtag ask the ump, and people are like, hey, what happens if there's an equipment issue? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> you know what I care? If you're going to do that, then give me a profile on the 50th anniversary of the San Diego chicken. Like, what's nobody cares about equipment issues from the 2004 NLDS? No, no one cares about, I, like, hey, is this, dude, is this, I had what to, is this rule? I hate to say this, but I turned the volume low. I didn't mute it because I love Don and Mud. But I mean, some of this stuff was a little, it's too hokey for me. I mean, if it's a problem for me and you, it's got to be a problem for most viewers, is the way I look at it. And, and, and I am hoping that the Padres are a team that reacts as far as like they're not, it, things aren't set in stone with whatever they're doing for the production of this team games and you know uh, all that stuff like you have to be reactionary you have to listen to your fan base you have to understand like okay this is work this isn't working we got to scrap this or this is working let's let's improve on this instead of trying to like just jam this down our throats and I, 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 again i don't know if this is like a padres thing or if it's a major league baseball thing since the broadcast is run by major league <laughs> baseball tough, man yeah but mike but, winters lives in solana beach someone said I know. Yeah, actually, you know, funny, funny story. So did you see him? I was dating when I, when I was dating this girl a long time ago before, way before Aaron, obviously. 
Um, she was oh, yeah. while while we were engaged. <laughs> she was roommates with Mike Winner's daughter, so we like all hung out. <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. Then you should be a part of the broadcast team. Wait, you hung out with Mike Winner's or Mike Winner's daughter? Mike Winter's daughter. Because it'd be super my, weird. My, my girlfriend Winters. at the time was roommates with her. I was like, whoa, okay. Okay. I want to get to the first super of the night, and we're gonna do it in one moment. <laughs> but there was some there was okay. And I have no problem with this. Jay Jackson says John drank the one game Kool-Aid again. This team feels different than 23. The offense is much better, etc. Uh, they're the same 500 team, never go on a winning streak, no consistency. Hold on. If you watched the show last night, nobody was getting sized for rings. No. Nobody was doing parade routes. Nobody was saying this team's even a playoff team. We just said what we've seen to this point, 15 runs in Korea, the comeback yesterday, overcoming a deficit in the home opener against the Giants. That's different than what we saw in 2023. I told you the record was the same. They, I mean, they have an identical record. I mean, they're worse. I think they're a game worse than they were a year ago. But I don't think anyone's drinking the Kool-Aid. I mean, nobody came on the air last night and was, you know, taking shots of peppermint schnapps. You know, that was not what was going on last night on the wrap-up show. No, no. But here's the thing. I said it multiple times, so I didn't want it to be, like, misconstrued. We were talking and celebrating that win. It was a great win. Like, you have to do that. And that's what we do. We then... Well, should we have said we the win sucked? All right, that, that's when we get a uh, a bunch of information we can base more broader opinions on this team. What we were talking about last night, like, hey, maybe this win, you can bottle that up, maybe. But as but we'll see about we'll see what happens there. But this win tonight was fantastic with Tatis and their fight in the sixth inning. Like that's fantastic. The home run by a star player, awesome. We're drinking the Kool-Aid. We didn't say this team was going to all of a sudden no, plan their parade said route. That. I mean, it, listen, we get criticized either way. We're too critical. Uh, you're too soft. I mean, come on. If you watch the show, I mean, listen, it's a long season. What do you want us to say? Wait until the end of the year? You want to watch wrap-up shows where we say wait until the end of the year? Right. Uh, run it back. Thank you. Um, for the Super Chat, we're just getting started, guys. Subscribe. We're trying to get to 6K ASAP, so please subscribe. Smash the like button for us. Thank you for the Supers. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. He says the passive Padres showed up again last night. They started hunting pitches around the middle and came back. Um, I mean, I don't know. I give credit, obviously, to the Cubs starter who was making, I think, his second start of the year. His first was awful. Um, he was very effective, Ben Brown. And then the bullpen was... I mean, super effective. You know, you had Cola come in with the bases loaded for Musgrove. He allows a grand slam. Uh, last <laughs> night, the Cubs' bullpen was awful. Tonight, the Cubs' bullpen was was much better. Um, as Manny would say, that's baseball. Are, are we done with Stephen Kolick? I, I, can we? I mean, I, don't I know he's a think so. I mean, I, I, I'm I willing to have the conversation. You want to have the conversation? You want to return the Rule Five guy because if he if he's gone, he's gone. What value does he bring? What value has he brought to this team so far? That Jeremiah Estrada couldn't. He went two innings. Oh, great. I can give me someone else in the minor league system that can go two innings for this team. Like, give me a break. Is he that important? I mean, I <laughs> like seriously, like, what are we doing here, guys? Right. You're gonna keep him I've just seen, to keep him. I've seen way I've seen way too much Stephen Cole this year for my liking. He's personally. made a lot of appearances. He's made a lot of appearances. He might like be Come tied in. to the lead. He's appeared appearance? in no, seven of fourteen games. So 50% of the games we've seen Stephen freaking Kolick. Well, all he's got, but your boy, uh, you know, Johnny Brito. Yeah, you're right. He's appeared more games than Brito. He's appeared in now Cosgrove's up to eight games already. Well, he's all, well, he's expected to be like a vital piece in his bullpen. So I expect to see him. So a lot. is Kolick. He's coming into like one nothing games. <laughs> Stephen Kolick's a rule <laughs> five guy. I know it doesn't make any sense. I do you okay? That that's an interesting point. I mean. Love the um cam. We can have that conversation. Love the um cam. I think that's a great feature. I like features that aren't going to take away from like me wanting to listen to the broadcast. I like new angles. I like new uh 4K cameras. Like, give me those types of new shot, like new shots of the game. I don't. I, oh, Don do you like Wire Cam presented by DeFi or SoFi or whoever it's presented by? Yeah, great. I love it. Um cam, Wire Cam. First base cam, uh, 4K behind the plate cam, uh, celebration cam, uh, bullpen cam, like whatever you, you want to do camera wise. Like, that's great. Love it. Do as many things as possible to make the broadcast more visually pleasing to the eye. 
instead of just the normal behind the pitcher every single time up. But when you mess with like the actual listening experience and turn it into pretty much an ump podcast, ump show. Ump show I mean, that, you're just here's I, what you do. This is so easy. We said this last week, like a Mike Pereira. If you want to incorporate an umpire, I have no problem with going to an umpire when they say, hey, San Diego has challenged this play. Mike Winters, what do you think? If San Diego challenges a play and you want to bring Mike Winters in for 15 to 30 seconds for the one to two challenges per game, I am mm -hmm. fine with that. Then have him in a studio. He can talk for 30 seconds a game, all 162. What do you think of this ruling or challenge? But to incorporate them for nine innings of a baseball game is unfair to the viewer. It just is. I mean, these people are passionate. We are, we are paying money to watch. We're so vested. We're spending hundreds of hours a year watching the Padres. It's not right to the viewer because it's taking away from the experience, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And, and if, if you disagree, okay, everyone's entitled to their opinion. It's nothing personal against Mike Winters. It's just not. Nothing. No. It's just it's not necessary. Like – to be completely fair, I think the insight that he's giving is fantastic. It's just I don't want to hear it. It's a little much. I just don't want to hear it because it's it just turns me off from the game. Like it completely takes me yeah, out of the game. I didn't have an issue when they showed they they did a, a replay because the first base umpire got it wrong on that ball that bounced up and Schilt challenged it. And clearly the runner beat the throw by like Perfect a split. Time second. to use winters. Yeah, and that was great. And he said, you know what? He he probably was listening for the sound of the ball in the mid and and got fooled by it. And that was great. It was good insight. And that's that's all I needed for the night to be honest nobody asked mike Pereira to do four hours with joe buck no because they realized that their fans would riot if that happened if they continue to talk about rules in the nfl and unfortunately real quick that one homies garage and thank you again like he says we made Schilt stop using nicknames unfortunately but we I haven't been so. able to get mike winners out of the booth <laughs> but we have unfortunately the show yeah. has power guys gosh but Schilty has stopped using nicknames unfortunately because of us um niles thank you Although he did call him Daylo in the afternoon scrum today again. Mm. And I think he said Toddy. So well, Toddy's like a Toddy's fine. I know. I know. But I love when he says Toddy. Uh, Niles, thank you. He says, is this team allergic to Manny? He finally gets a hit. He had a couple, didn't he? He had a single and a double, I want to say. Yeah, um, he finally gets a hit in the game, and everyone decides to take the night off. I mean, it's kind of a fair point. Machado tonight, two for four with a double, raising his average to 204. He had two of the four hits. The other uh, was Bogarts and Rosario, Rosario's home run. So, I don't know. It's just one night. I mean, if Manny gets two hits a night, they'll be in good shape. But this is just its just one night. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's early. <laughs> it's nice though that he got a couple hits because he was scuff ling <laughs> yes Padres with runners in scoring position 0 for 3 I want to say they were still hitting 360 or something coming into this game by every metric their offense has been it's been significantly better significantly better than last year it just at times you're watching them and it doesn't feel like it at all it, it, it's weird because again they came into tonight 10th and on base plus slugging that's pretty good now, I don't know where they are now after this, maybe 11th, 12th, but they're still top half of baseball, definitely, and on base plus slugging right now. It doesn't always seem like that. Half the time, it seems like that. E-Racing with Dale, thank you for the super chat. He says, not the best game, obviously. Manny did a little better today. Appreciate all you guys do. Subscribe, like, share, wrap-up show for life. That's dope. Okay, that's a good public service announcement. Subscribe, guys. There's over 200 of you here. Subscribe, smash the like button, and uh, we appreciate your supers. Like that one from... You racing with Dale? Oh, what is that? My phone just blew up. Sorry. Literally? No, no. Thank Sorry. you, Dale. Yeah. Um, and thank you, Eric, for becoming Eric. a member by clicking join down below. Yes, we will have new emojis coming potentially as soon as tomorrow. Um, I'm talking Shilty. I'm talking Crony. I'm talking Bogey. I'm talking Toddy. I'm talking Swari. Now, okay. did so? I have a question for you that I probably should ask you off off air. Just ask, or put it in the private chat. Did you? Are these? Um, I know where you're going with this because you haven't even told me what you're doing. With the, look at the emojis, like the ones that said "Jim sucks" or "Jim's an idiot." Are you making emojis that are actually like the faces, or are you just doing? I don't. I can't, Jim. Do you <laughs> know, know me? I don't know how to turn on my computer. 
<laughs> so it's fact. I don't know anything. No, I went to some guy in Fiverr that does it for five bucks. Here's the here. I'll take you behind the curtain, folks. I went to, I'll tell you who's doing it. Hold on. I'm at Fiverr right now. Okay. Okay. So there's a guy, I think, in Indonesia who. You have a guy in Indonesia that works for us? Correct. What? Jace. So I placed an order through Jace. He's in India, excuse me. Uh, he's a level two creator on Fiverr. And I said, hey, Jace. Can you create the following six emojis for me or whatever they're called? Um, and he's like, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, and, then, and then boom, they show up 24 hours later. Wow. All right. But with their face, what are you talking about with their face? We had the other ones with the face, the John and Jim, like, ah, remember those? Yeah. Is that what you want? I don't know. Of like Machado? I don't know. We can first something out. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job, sweetie. <laughs> Are you talking to me? Yes, you. <laughs> That's a meme. Don't worry about it. Um, HBVV, thank you. HBVV, are you drinking? Are you using a different type of keyboard? Or like, is this English, bro? Down. Well, um, I mean, his Shilty, name is HBVV. True. <laughs> Shilty should have left Musgrove in. We need a Abram Z. Abram Z homered maybe at Oracle tonight, or did something? Yeah, CJ Abrams had a. <laughs> Uh, Gene Long home run tonight. That's what I thought. Park. I saw that. Out to um, right, right? Out to uh, right, and he hit off a left-hander, Kyle Harrison. Was it a splash landing? Almost. Okay. He, I mean, he's it's just he's hitting 344 this year with three home runs, eight RBIs, three stolen bases, and an OPS of 1,088. No big deal. So <laughs> should have kept him. Nationals won the Potentially. Trade. Now, hold on. Should he have left Musgrove in the game? So Joe Musgrove in this game threw 85 pitches. It was bases loaded how many outs when he left? Bases loaded nobody out, right? Nobody out. Nobody out. 85 pitches. It's I hate to, it's early. Nah. It's coming off injury. It's his fourth start of the year. He's got a 70 RA, by the way. Is that good? Again, I was the guy saying earlier, give him time. Give him five stars. Me give too. Him Me too. He's got a 687. Yeah, you would have liked to see a better performance from him tonight. It just at times watching him pitch tonight, it felt like he was really trying to force that breaking pitch, and it just was not working for him at all. Mm -hmm. Didn't it feel like that? Like it just was a lot of breaking pitches in the dirt, and just they were getting snuffed out. And maybe that's because he felt like his other pitches, like I'm gonna get rocked here, so I gotta try to get him with my secondary stuff and my breaking pitches. But man, it felt like he threw a lot of breaking pitches tonight that just weren't even close. It just feels a little more like challenging for him for whatever reason. I'm watching him and it doesn't seem as quote unquote easy as at times it has appeared for him mm -hmm. as a Padre. And I feel like that's because he, you know, again, was hurt at the end of last year. And I don't know what to say about it. I mean, again, I'm not concerned. It's just, it is what it is. It's four starts, it's a six, eight, seven ERA. He's allowed a ton of hits. I was yeah. like, it was five today in four innings. But if you look at it, he's allowed a ton of hits. He's not getting any swings and misses. Innings he's, thrown. he's not getting any swings and misses. Like, not a lot, at least. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, his next start will be not against the Dodgers. It'll be against the Brewers. In Milwaukee. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess uh, I'll look at it at the end of April and be like, you know, here's what it is. Like, you know. Right. It's hard. What are you going to do? I mean, you're going to need him to make 30 plus starts. You're going to need him to have a better than a 6.87 ERA, and he will obviously. Right. But you're going to need him healthy. You know, yeah. Two two rough outings for your one and two starters and Darvish and Musgrove. I'll tell you that. Right. So if you're needing a good outing tomorrow at 3:40. 3:40 start from time Dylan for the Manny Machado bobblehead. Nobody has given me an explanation. I even tagged at Jesse Agler because <laughs> he knows everything. Someone tell us why this team is playing a 340 game on a Wednesday afternoon during our freaking show at home. Right. Like, I'm right. I'm trying to. Like, on the road, I get it. It happens. And of course. Well, yeah. If you're in Philadelphia, it's 640 Eastern. Right. Like, all next week, it's going to be like 405 starts. It's like, oh. But 340 at home on a Wednesday afternoon? Like, what? Is it a national televised game or something? No, 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 no. Is it? I don't think so. Why would it be? But like, no, nobody has any. I, I'm getting so many replies. 
And nobody has any idea. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah, Eric Grubner, bro, explain yourself. I think there's a cup. Someone did say on social there's a couple of 340 day games this year for the Padres. Shut up. I know. I was thinking the same thing. Do you have a full? Is it easy for you to look at the schedule? It is. Hold on. Do you see any others, or is, or is that person lying? Let's okay, see. I'm so looking too. I see 110, 110, 110. 340. Seattle. July 10th. And then a 540. 540. On July 31st. They have another 340 against Minnesota. And then another 340 versus Houston. Houston. So this is obviously, this is a plan. They, here's my thinking. Hear me out. It allows you to bring kids. Because it's kind of like after school. Hey, got to pick you up early from school. Go to a podcast. But then again, they don't go to school in July. The kids, those people. <laughs> I don't understand. I need an explanation. Hey, we're going to do 110 a lot, and then we're going to do 340. I need an explanation. And I need it now. While we look for an explanation, um, we remind you to support our title sponsor here on the Wrap Up Show. We can't do this without your support. Everyone here live or on replay that is watching without the support of Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance, you know the deal. He's an amazing insurance agent. You can take that from me. I've got a homeowner's life insurance and earthquake insurance policy with Mark. He can save you $750 by switching your insurance to him. The next time you have a renewal, before you just renew, call Mark. He's a great insurance agent. He's a San Diegan. He's a lifelong Padres fan. His website is on the screen. Click the link in the description down below. You can get to Mark's website and get free quotes online or by calling Mark. He'll talk to you about the Padres. He'll talk to you about saving money, auto, home, renter's life, earthquake, whatever it is. I had to file a claim two years ago. He took care of everything, saved us thousands of dollars. Uh, he's a great insurance agent, saved us so much time as well. So if you've got an insurance need, if you support our work, please get in contact with Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance, the title sponsor of The Wrap-Up Show. Yeah, all his information is in the ticker below. Uh, mnimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to everybody, Mark, let them know that the uh, John and Jim from The Wrap-Up Show sent you. Yeah, Rich, it's not just tomorrow at 340. Apparently, it's like six other games this year on a Wednesday <laughs> yeah, afternoon like, that are at 340. It's like three or four. Yeah, he makes a good point. 340 on Memorial Day? Makes sense. But tomorrow? Huh? yeah i don't i can't there's they're gotta dumb. be a reason they're dumb one time it's i guess if you want to like make some type of an excuse for it but like because you're giving out a bobblehead are they get my other Isn't question that a weird time to give out a bobblehead three in the afternoon i don't want i don't have it in front of me but i'm wondering if the all the 340 wednesday start times are giveaway days that's a great call it's a great call. It's possible. But then why wouldn't they be at 640? It's because so they're true. all into off days. Or a lot of them are. Mm, a lot of them. And by the are. way, Kathy, 705, I asked this question today on John and Jim because I wasn't listening to Jim and he apparently provided it in an update because of a nationally televised game. It was on TBS, this game. Bob Costas was doing the game, yeah. Oh, great. I didn't watch, but <laughs> did he have an umpire with him? I would have watched, actually. No, I don't think he did. So that's because it was nationally televised. So that's the right. That had nothing to do. I don't think with the Padres that had was a TV thing. But these three forty games have nothing to do with television. There's a three forty game on August twenty first against the Minnesota Twins at home, but then the next day they played the Mets at six forty. Hmm. And then they play the Dodgers on July thirty first at five forty. Yeah, at least it's not a three in the morning. To Vaughn's point. And they play Seattle on July 10th at 3.40. Right. I mean, whatever, dude. Richard, thank you. He says, speaking of bad broadcast, ESPN has our Sunday game. He's a Dodger fan. Get ready for endless in-game interviews. Eduardo Perez runs his mouth nonstop, just unwatchable. I would say this from a Dodgers perspective. It's like the greatest thing you've ever watched. I mean, you, you think it was like a, a Dodgers broadcast watching ESPN Sunday night baseball games, right? Um, so I don't know. I, I actually think they do a pretty good job with their Sunday night broadcast. I really do. It's not everyone's cup of tea. They definitely branch out a little bit in their content. But I don't know. Every time I watch like Dodgers Padres on Sunday night baseball, it seems to be a, you know, a Dodgers home game uh, broadcast. But here's the thing about ESPN Sunday night baseball. Me and you growing up, 
it was it's like the Dude. like the like I the remember when they Monday lost. night football of baseball because you had John right, Miller 10 million viewers easily and now John like Miller and Joe Morgan and it was so good for so long and now I mean they've tried calling the games uh, Ravitch and Perez, yeah, Eduardo Perez and like David Cohn or something like that. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's not my favorite. I mean, I think they put a lot into it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's not everyone's cup of tea. I, I still like when the Padres are on Sunday night baseball personally. Yeah. It's, it's whatever. But it's not, yeah, it's not 1990 anymore, you know, where yeah, it's like it's, a big deal. Correct. Is what I would say. Um, listen, in a game like this, Tatis 0 for 4. Crony 0 for 4. Proey 0 for 3. Kim, Kimmy, can we talk about Kimmy? Can we talk about Kimmy? I think we might have to talk about Kimmy. I mean, we're going to have to talk about Kimmy. I know it's April 9th, and I'm not saying, you know, option him. <laughs> I'm really not, but no. Wow. Has he, I mean, it's been like a season long slump. And, and at this point, it's a, it's at least 0 for 3 with 3 Ks. Like this guy's, a, I mean, there's, he's a little lost right now. Again, not hopeless. Not hopeless, but man, has he struggled. We could talk about how Manny has struggled. And, but Kimmy, who Sunday had the two errors and then 0 for 3, 3 Ks and has slumped for, for two plus weeks. Do we have an explanation here? I mean, this guy was a really productive offensive player a year ago. Does he need to lead off? Is that what is necessary here to get Kimmy going? I will say this, and I was talking with uh, Fadden the other day. Oh, it and must be nice. yeah, it was nice. You know how to, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. Kimmy's April last year, John. Do you want to know what he hit in April last year? And seventy nine. Well, I remember. I'm going to say. Don't look it up. He, no, I know I'm not. I'm looking to my right. Look at me. I'm going to say he had struggled because they moved him. Um, I, I'll say two twenty nine. In 25 games, 79 at bats. Kimmy hit 177 with a 556 OPS. Okay. So comparable. And then the following month, he hit 276 with an 808 OPS. In June, he hit 291 with an 844 OPS. July, he hit 337 with a 1000 OPS. And then August, he got. He kind of started going back down, but still, if you hit 273 with the 752 OPS, and then in September, he'd fall off a cliff again. <laughs> so what are you saying? I mean, can we guarantee that's going to happen again? I don't know. I'm just, maybe it's a trend that he starts out slow and hopefully he gets hot, but a lot of him getting hot last year had to do with him moving into the leadoff spot, if you remember. He started playing better, and then this team realized, okay, we're going to put him in the leadoff spot. And then okay. he just took off like a rocket ship. Okay, so I ask you this, and we've talked about this moving around this lineup a little bit. We're not looking for wholesale change. We're not saying everything's got to go, but like, what's going to be the deal here? Because if Bogarts isn't batting leadoff, where is he batting? Well, he's going to have to hit. He's going to have to move down in the lineup. It's just plain and simple. The problem with that is he is his power is zapped. He can't hit for extra base. He can't hit for power unless he gets like. I mean, last night was like a, a eclipse with him hitting a home run. It feels like he has two he extra hit base somebody. hits on the. On I, the I didn't see. Did he double in the first inning today? Because I didn't see it. Did he? he I think. I think so. Unless I'm. I'm. I think so. Well, anyway, yeah. If he's going to be hitting fifth, he needs to be producing and driving in runs. Because when he hit fifth last year. You look up and it's the end of August and he's got like 42 RBIs. So that's the only right. like risk here. It's a risk reward. Do you want to put Kim in a spot where he succeeded a lot last year and move, move Bogarts into a spot where he kind of struggled, but you also have to wait for Kim to get going. You can't just put Kim in the leadoff spot when he's hitting what he's doing right now. Well, that's this I know. No sense. This I know. Merrill can't go to the leadoff spot if you've got Kim who excelled in the leadoff spot, not in the leadoff spot. So way before Jackson Merrill is going to make his way to the leadoff spot, Hassan Kim is going to make his way to the leadoff spot for me. Now, Merrill can hit eighth, as he has. He can hit ninth. 
you know, and whatever. If there was a day where he batted somewhere else in the lineup, okay. But I don't think he can consistently lead off at this point. It's been no time. He's been very productive. That's a good thing. Why would you change that right now, especially with Hassan Kim struggling? It feels like if someone's going to get an opportunity towards the top of the lineup who's had success there previously, it would be Kim over Merrill. Yeah, but you're also going to put a, a guy that's like ice cold in the leadoff spot. And hope uh, and Alexander Bogarts is, is setting the world on fire. I know. What's going to happen it's, first? It's, it's what's that? I said what? Like what's going to happen first? Either Kim gets going, or they move him to leadoff spot, or the next solar eclipse. <laughs> the next solar eclipse. That's twenty years away, by the way. Um, Campio for three tonight. He hit one ball hard. Um, Merrill 0 for 3, 2 Ks, no biggie, kind of due for a night like that. Um, and Rosario pinch hitting, again, had the only run, essentially. Well, it was the only run, solo home run. For the Padres here today, then, again, Musgrove, four innings, five hits, four runs. Kolick, blah. Brito, good. Again, the game was kind of decided. Cosgrove, scoreless inning. Yeah, I don't know what to think of the bullpen either. I really don't. I, I have no real feel for this bullpen at all. 14 games into the season. I, I like Suarez, obviously. Um, I like, who else do we like in this bullpen? Peralta, Dalo. But I don't have a good feel for it, truthfully. I don't even think Mike Schilt has a good feel for it yet. Because <laughs> he's given Oops. guys that he's got to use. And when yeah. you're trailing in the game, you got to use what you have. Like, who else would you have brought in in the, what, fifth and fourth inning today? Right, was dude, you don't think Kolek should even be on this roster? I don't. I know. So who else would you brought in? Is my point, Burrito? Johnny Burrito, Johnny Burrito, Yuki Matsui. I don't know. I mean, I don't even think. Yeah. I don't even think Steve Kolek should be on this roster. I think they should have Jeremiah Estrada here. I mean, he made your opening day roster in uh, Korea, but it's it's because he's a Rule Five guy, and they got to put him on this roster. Yeah, but you really don't. I mean, you can't overthink yourself there. As in, you can't keep him on your roster at the detriment of the team. <laughs> so if he's not benefiting your team, if you can hide a Rule 5 guy, great. But if it's not working out, we're talking about Stephen Kolick here. You don't have Juan Soto on your bench. You don't have 18-year-old Juan Soto as a Rule 5 guy. With all due respect to Stephen Kolick, I get it. One's a pitcher, one's a hitter. But like, do you have to keep him? Like, Is he so valuable to the future of this major league club in 2025 and beyond that you got to keep them up all year the second Stephen cole has gone you'll forget about him so exactly um until HBV, he turns like a 45 save right. guy <laughs> until he's josh Hader for the like brewers um <laughs> hbvv thank you says the eclipse made the padres bats hit nice. yesterday it was a weird day it's a very weird day. It was a, it's it so was, weird that they're capable of something like last night, and then you watch a game like this. And I'm like, they have, there's just no threat. Like they, they didn't even like. It was just listless and lifeless. Because that's baseball, baseball, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true, to be honest with you. It kind of just baseball, to be honest with you. Um, while we have a moment, I want to remind you about our partner here on the wrap up show, Aura. Our good friends at Aura. Their co-founder, Will, huge Padres fan, offices right here in Liberty Station. You got to support. Aura with plant-based nutritional products. All of their products are plant-based. If you're looking to get healthier, you should start at Aura, ORA.organic. You're looking at your at their website on the screen right now. They've got everything you could possibly want. Plant-based uh, probiotics, which I take every single day. They have pre-workout supplements. They have omega-3 oils. If you're taking a fish oil, you should take the plant-based supplement from Aura. They have immunity pills, sleep pills, pre-workout supplements, so much more. Check them out at ORA.organic. Click that link in the description down below. If you're looking to get healthier, you, your friends, your family, uh, support the channel by supporting Aura, ORA.organic. Yeah, if you uh, want to live that hot, healthy lifestyle that you crave, Aura is the place to go. They have probiotics for gut health. They have sleep pills. They have um, uh, pre-workouts for your workouts. They have uh, protein powder for post-workout shakes. They have everything you need. If you are looking to take some supplements and vitamins and you just are, don't know where to go and you don't want to go to the grocery store and just pick out some random stuff, you don't know what's in it, go to Aura. That's the, that's the healthiest place to go. Um, www.ora.organic. Pick up some supplements and you'll thank us later. Um, someone asked if they have um, – no, they don't have Vi Viagra. 
But go to ORA.organic. They got products. I don't know if they have, they don't have Viagra because they're not Viagra, but check yeah. them out. Oops. What am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get back to these supers here. Guys, if you're here, subscribe. You're on content for Padres fans. Smash the like button for us. Trying to get to 150. There's no way we're there as of yet. Are we? No. <laughs> so, so like this. Follow us on X at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. We appreciate your super chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. Like run it back. Who says, I think Bogey. Okay, this is an interesting theory, Jim. What do you make of this? I think Bogey has been trying to hit like a leadoff guy. Just trying to get on base. Needs to bat fourth or fifth. Looking to hit for power. One, Kim to Merrill. I don't know if Lito Fitters really hit like that anymore. When Tatis leads off, he hits a million home runs. When uh, Kyle Schwarber leads off, he hits a million home runs. Right. Like, it, it, is it TJ different Abrams for Bogey? home runs now. Right. Right. So this is different for Bogey? I don't think Bogey's up there like, well, if I get a pitch to drive, I'm just going to actually try to hit that the other way and get on as a single. <laughs> right. Like, no, he's trying to hit the ball very, very far um, right. and very, very hard. And again, last couple of days, he's had a homer, he's had a double. That's encouraging. You know, maybe that continues. That would hey. be that would be good. Yeah, you hope so. Because, I mean, he's making a lot of money. So you're going to need to get some production. <laughs> it goes back him. to that. It's hope so that because though. it will help the team. But because he... <laughs> I mean, it's like we're not sitting here talking about Fernando Tatis' contract, right? Correct. Yet. Not right now because he's performed, you know? Yeah, I mean, when you perform, nobody gives a shit about your contract. Nobody wants to criticize Tatis for going over Fortnite. Figure that was going to happen. Um, right. HBBV, thank you. He says Otani bet the Padres would win. That's why they lost. I no, I don't think it's as simple as that. No, no, no. By the way, you look up, and they're ten and four. I'm talking about the Dodgers, and the Padres mm -hmm. are six and eight. I don't have the standings in front of me. What is that? Four games somewhere in the neighborhood, three and a half, four games back. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're already four games up right now. Dare I say, I'm going to say something very stupid. Do it. Okay, here's what I'm going to say that's stupid. <laughs> I won't even say it. Say it. What I would say is, again, they get six, seven up on you. <laughs> you got you got real work to do. <laughs> it's <only a> I <laughs> mean, it's going to be hard to keep up with these guys. Were we? It's were we? Be hard. But we're not. We were we never going into the season talking about the division. I know. That's why I don't care. I don't care. Like if the Dodgers win two of three this weekend, okay. Like the we division didn't think they're winning the division regardless. Probably over already. That was kind of my point. And yes, whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but it it's not like we're not going to not watch the Padres because they're five games back of the Dodgers, right? No. Because they've been five games back of the Dodgers for the better part of 10 years. The only way we stop watching the Padres is if they're like 15 games under 500. <laughs> By the way, you know what? Here's one thing that I have absolutely like despised this first two weeks of the season. I'm seeing it like on social. I'm seeing it on like these weird Facebook groups. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, man, Facebook's an interesting place. But never go on Facebook. This, 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 um, Guys, they're in second place. What, what are we second place? What are you even talking about? <laughs> like I, that means absolutely nothing. Second nothing. place. Second. What, what are we talking about? There's no. There's six and eight. That's, it, we're not a hundred games in the year, and they're not in second place. They're six and eight. That's who they are. The Diamondbacks have been terrible. The Giants have been awful. The Rockies are like the Marlins, except better. So don't give me second place. We, we can look up at a, if you're in second place, but you're under 500, who cares if you're in second place? Truthfully, until you told me the Dodgers were four games up or 10, they right. won 10 games or whatever. And only if I see it on social media from like an MLB account saying like, oh, the, the right. Yankees are the first team to 12 yep. wins or whatever. 12 wins, yep. I honestly, because I focus so much on the Padres because that's the team we cover. We have a wrap-up show. And we have a radio show every day. I don't know what anybody else is doing record-wise right now. <laughs> right. I truly really. don't. I truly don't. I have no idea what's going on in the AL Central. I have zero clue what's going on in the in the AL West. I have zero clue what's going on in the NL Central. And the only reason why I know the Braves are in first place is because like there's the, the Mets suck and the Phillies or whatever. Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What anybody else is doing because I focus so much on the Padres, and it's not are the time. Marlins okay. Are the Marlins good or bad? The Marlins, are the worst team in baseball. That's what I Correct. do. Know. I do know some things, but are the A's 
uh, good or bad? The only reason why I saw it, I saw it tonight. The, the the A's have a better record than I think the Giants. Right? They now. have like the same record as like they're four and seven. Yeah. So I know some things, but majority of standings, they I have a better record than the Giants. I you're right. Don't know. You, I don't. I don't know who's le- who's in first place in the Central in the AL Central. Zero clue. I have zero clue about the NL Central. Well, the Cubs, I guess, because the Padres are playing them right now. But wow, you're an idiot. No, it's Pittsburgh. Um, oh, see, I don't know. Yeah. And then the Cleveland Guardians are in first place in the AL Central. You know who's in first place in the AL West? Uh, Texas. No. Yes, they're tied with the Angels, though. Okay. See, I don't. I don't know, dude. I, I just like. It, the, the standings aren't are relevant to me until later in the season. Oh, I completely agree. I completely agree. But that's why, like, when someone's like, they're in second place, I'm like, what are you talking about? And that's why when I say, like, they're five games behind the Dodgers or four, I mean, who even cares? I'm, I'm just assuming. Someone, who disagrees with this? I'm just assuming the Dodgers are going to run away from everyone. How are they not going to? They're already 10 and four. They're going to have a bad season. Like, does anyone in here believe the Dodgers are not going to win. Let's just throw a, a conservative number out there. 94 games, which would be like their worst regular season in what? At least a decade. <laughs> Does anyone here believe the Dodgers will win fewer than 94 games? Raise your hand. I mean, you can't raise your hand, but you get no. my point. Virtually raise it. Like, nobody believes that. And then let me ask you this. Is there anyone in here that believes the Padres will win more than 94 games? No. So if nobody believes the Padres are winning more than 94, and if nobody believes the Dodgers are losing or not winning 94, then w- there's nothing to even talk about. It's over before it started. And yeah, you hate to say that. You do, because it's it's kind of like you'll, you'll get those fans being like, you can't say that. It's yeah. baseball. You never know what's going to happen. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but we kind of know. Exactly. Yeah. We don't know, kinda, but... You have a feeling. I mean, everyone's talking about 85 wins. Like... That's that's the like goal right now for this team is like get to eighty five, see what happens. Yeah, and again, I I don't think we can say this either. Like, no. I, I'm not saying that they can't make the playoffs. I'm saying it's going to be really challenging to win a division. Obviously, like l- look at this division for a yeah. decade plus of the Dodgers. But I can't say after a six and eight start they're not a playoff team. I mean, that's crazy, right? I don't. I can't say they are a playoff team, right? But to say that they're not a playoff team, um, and and like someone said in here, like T. Kelly, like Dodgers, you know, win barring catastrophic injuries, even injuries though, they're still really good, dude. That's the thing. I mean, it would take a lot to de- derail them, you know. And they've had, they've dealt with injuries. Truth be told, they've had off the field issues all the time over the last half decade, and they've still been able to overcome it. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Again. We don't know what's going to happen with the Padres. I just feel like I do know what's going to happen with the Dodgers, which is if they don't win 94 games, I'd be utterly shocked. But I don't it, know what's going to happen with the Padres. It feels like, and this is what happens with really good teams. Same thing with the Braves. I would put those two teams, maybe the Astros. I mean, these is all barring, like like you said, T. Kelly, catastrophic injuries. Mm-hmm. Those three teams are their season start in the postseason because those teams are all definitely like pretty much hey world series or bust type of mentality and for those three teams if they stay healthy their season start in the postseason padres Correct. different story their mm-hmm. season is every night you know live and die with every pitch <laughs> right yeah it's like that's such a good point it's almost like what march madness has become it's like you can go you know gonzaga 27 and 3 but if you don't win in the tournament your season was disappointing where if it, again a team like the dodgers that's what it is a team like the padres is not that i think if you make the postseason win around they would be like wow that was a you know pretty encouraging year considering what happened last year of them right. missing out so it's all about perspective, really. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's a couple of t- I mean, the New York Yankees aren't just trying to get in. I mean, it's the Yankees trying to win a World Series, you know. And just if just because we're talking about this team maxing out at potentially 85, 86 wins, that doesn't mean that this that this year will, will like suck. It it just you know, if they miss out by um, you know, 15 games on the division, like that has no it doesn't reflect at all how good this season can be, even if they look up at the standings and the Dodgers are, you know, 
18 games ahead of them. They could still have a really good year and it could be a fun year and we could have fun and you guys could have fun if they only win 85 games, but yet still finish 16 games back of the Dodgers. Like both are true. Correct. What are you looking at? Every once in a while I try to like, I don't think stay like up to date on what's going on in the chat. I have no clue what's going on, but the things are happening in the chat that I don't fully comprehend. So, okay. All right. Here's what I do comprehend. I have been playing a lot of underdog fantasy, and so has Jim, and it's so my should life. you. It is so much fun. I mean, we're talking about it as often as we talk about basically anything. If you saw our text chain, you would laugh. If you listen to us at breaks during John and Jim, you'd be laughing. you got to get to underdogfantasy.com, and you got to play pickums with us throughout the course of this baseball season. You can play each and every day. You can play Padres pickums if you use promo code pods wrap that is p-a-d-s-w-r-a-p you're getting a 100 deposit match up to 100 you heard me right 100 deposit match up to 100 um mlb again it's so simple uh, you can choose from every single game in baseball for tomorrow now the padres game just went final so i don't know if they have action up for wednesday do they not as of yet it so. will be up later but like let's let's quickly do this jim um, do I want to use Otani? Kind of ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me. So, like, you. let's say Otani doesn't homer tomorrow, right? Oh, there's a lower for him. Yeah, lower 0.65. and then let's say Paddock strikes out five, and then let's just let's find one more. Um, let's see here, real quick, and then let's say. Man, he, I'm just looking at this. Um, and then give me one more, Jim. Then, okay. And then Freddie Freeman has stolen base. Okay, I get it. It's maybe unrealistic. That $10 wager pays 18 to 1 by going 3 for 3. And oh, by the way, you can flex it, which means you can still get 2 out of 3 right and win and still win 3 times your money. So you can pay 18 to 1 on that by going 3 for 3. Underdogfantasy.com, promo code PODSWRAP, that's P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P, get a 100% deposit match up to $100. What do you think, Jim? I like it. I'm trying to find a all-former Padres play right Ooh. now. Okay, I'm listening. Let's see if they have it. Okay, here we go. Boom. All right. So, here we go. Ready? I'm going to go... <laughs> Listen to this, guys. Okay. Easy. This is the, this right here will show you how fun fantasy could be. And if you win or underdog fantasy, and if you win, you are like going to Las Vegas. Okay. Ty France, higher than a half home run. <laughs> okay. Ryan Weathers, higher than four and a half strikeouts. CJ Abrams, higher than a half a double. And Josh Bell, higher than a half home run. Does anybody want to guess what twenty dollars would pay? Is that the one hundred to one? Play? Is that twenty for two grand? Yes. Is it? Yes. Say it if, again. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Ty France higher than a half home run. Ryan yeah. Weathers higher than four and a half strikeouts. C.J. Abrams higher than a half a double. And Josh Bell higher than a half home run. Twenty dollars pays two thousand dollars. If you guys really want to just Screw it! Win big, win big money. Two hundred and fifty dollars would pay out to twenty five grand. <laughs> Dude, you do can win twenty five grand just somebody, like that. Somebody do it. The Jim, former Padres do play. It. Do it for ten. 20, do it for 10. ten. Ten pays a grand. Okay. Okay. Jim's doing. It for, join Jim in doing that. Promo code Pods Wrap. Yes. Former Padres uh, play. Get a 100% deposit match up to $100. What do you think of this? This, this is the legalese. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Did you get this and you put it in and you... Well, just... I could have done the whole... No, here's the thing. I could have done this. This looks like a... I could have yeah. done this, but I didn't want to go through the whole song and dance. But this is but a million times better than whatever the hell you put on the screen. You didn't like... You didn't like what I put on the screen? No. 
T. Kelly's asking me for how about three of those picks? Which ones? Let's go. Let's take off the yeah. Ty France home run because that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's tough. All right. <laughs> Whoops, that that messed me up. Okay, let's go. Let's just keep this bar up. Yeah. Okay. Moron. Um, <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> talking to you. All right. Let's go double higher than. Uh... All right. If you guys want to do, here we go. Oh my goodness. All right. CJ Abrams higher than a half double. Josh Bell higher than a half home run. Ryan Weathers higher than four and a half strikeouts. What's that pack? Ten dollars pays out to seven hundred bucks. So seventy to one. Seventy to one. If you did a higher than four and a half strikeouts for Ryan Ruthers. So if he strikes out five tomorrow, Josh Bell gets a home run and CJ Abrams gets a double. You bet ten dollars on that, Rager right there in underdog fantasy. Boom. Seven hundred dollars in the bank. Join us. Promo code PodDrop, P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Yes, always wager responsibly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older. Oh, man. I had a crazy play tonight that just effed me. Can I pull something up just, again, since we're just doing late night plugs right here? You don't yeah. mind Tell me, tell me if I'm wrong. I kind of like this. Okay, this is a big league chew collection for the Padres. Were you a big league chew guy? Love big league chew. It, the, the, the taste thing. went out by like two three seconds. chews. Um, I'm kind of a big league chew guy. Where the hell is this? I'm like, but anyway, I want to find. Gosh darn it! For my first time on the internet, John. I'm such an idiot. Oh, here we go. I know you are. So look at this. You got Big League Chew. Hear me out. You've got Raspberry Big League Chew caps. You have uh, Sour Apple, this green one. You have Watermelon, this like pink, blue, green one. You have Grape, this black and purple one. You've got Strawberry, this green and maroon one. Then you've got a Big League Chew Padres t-shirt. And then you've got like the authentic sweatshirt. Like that's kind of dope to me i kind of grew up in the big league chew uh, era i like that sweatshirt a lot the me hat too. stupid <laughs> yeah again I, I, it might not be for everyone but if you want them before they're gone because you know how this stuff works. Want. i Click like the, the first in the top of the chat i like the first hat right like there this? i like that one it's kind of cool, like a right? weird sd a big like sd kind of, logo yeah um i kind of honestly my favorite i think was the watermelon <laughs> so you like the mets colors oh wait no there's it's not mets, mets pink I, I thought it was sorry. I thought it was a different color. It looked like Mets from far away. No, it's a watermelon, like pink and green. Yeah, I just found it kind of interesting. As Vaughn says, it's good, but not eighty dollars good. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. Very fair. Well, it's like have you ever, you know, have you ever been to Petco? You know, it ain't mm -hmm. cheap. On some nachos, that's eighty bucks. Yeah, six and eight, Jim, through fourteen games. The Gotta get off to a fast start, right? Is that what you for everything in life is. It could always be worse. It could be five and nine. You're right. I mean, they. What if they would have lost last night? What would we be saying right now? What would we be saying right now if they lost oh. Sunday? Oh, dude, the way they lost, then Monday, and oh. then tonight. Fire everybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. We said yesterday you can't lose a series after winning the way you you won, which puts the onus on Dylan Cease tomorrow. Yep. To really pitch well. Yep. Um, kind of as simple as that, Cal Hendricks. Has made two starts. He has not pitched well at all. Tomorrow's a big it's game. Good. Yeah. Tomorrow's a and game. And you got the Machado they, bobblehead. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Um, early oh, kind yeah, of like. Talk about this. Like season. Early season game where it's it, it's not a must win, obviously. But you look at it and if you lose that game, you're going in an off day, going to Dodger Stadium. Like, what the F? If you win it, you feel good. Won the series. First series win of the year? Like, that's another thing, too, John, is they haven't had a series win this year. Good point. What is this, their fourth or fifth series? They've had the two in Korea. Mm -hmm. They've had the four-gamer against the Giants. Then what they have? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis, and then the Giants again. And the Giants again. So this is their fifth series. Um, and they've split a few in there. But, yeah, it would be nice to get – your fifth series. You don't want to keep waiting this off. It's not like it's going to be easy this weekend taking on the Dodgers. Right. 
So at some point, you got to pick up a serious win. That's a good point. Some supers are rolling in here late, so thank you, guys. Um, Thanks, get guys. them in now if you want to make sure we get to them live. If you're here on replay, thank you for the super thanks. James, thank you for the membership and the super. He says, how do we feel about one less bat and one more catcher? Was well, that one less bat um, because it's position player for position player, but I see what you're saying. Um, I kind of like the idea of having three catchers, but I'm not in love with it because of Machado and his lack of flexibility because he can't play in the field. So I, I can't DH Campy right now because of Manny. Um, but I think it makes sense more for Paulie because Paulie's got to play. And that's what they're saying by putting him in AAA. He's got to play. Yeah, I, I, I like it, honestly, because Camp, Campy. You know, actually, his nickname is not Campy. What is it? It's Lou. From, from Shilty? Not from Shilty. From... Uh, Donnie. Donnie calls him Lou. That's his nickname. It's on his chest protector. Is Lou. But he might have to get a change though. Now that Shilty calls everyone, you know, with a Y. Nope. I don't care what Shilty says. His nickname okay. is Lou. Lou. Luis Campusano. Lou. That makes sense. Makes sense. It'd be like if my name's doing? Jonathan and you call me John. We're doing this whole thing wrong here. It's Lou. Lou. Yeah. If we I played like for the if we played for the Padres, me and you, would he call us Johnny and Jimmy? Yes. Because he wouldn't say Russell and Schaefery. No, he'd say he'd say Johnny. He'd call you Jimmy. Like would if you're a baseball you guy, you do the you do the like no, he would you do the, like the cringy Y E, like, hey, what's up? Uh, you know, Jackie. His name's so, Jack. So if I was the you were the eight hole hitter. I'm the nine hole hitter, and we start a, a ninth inning rally. We're d we're down a run. You get on, yeah. I get you over, and then Tati hits the home run. Whatever, you know. Yeah. And we win. It'd be like hey, Johnny and Jimmy set up Tati. One hundred percent. It'd be yeah. amazing. Yep. We are the Johnny. We are Johnny and Jimmy. One hundred percent. I might go to the cages to see if I can get to the big league soon. Just no to see if shot possible. would he call me. Yeah, you know Jim Russell did a great job. Jim yeah. Russell. John Schaefer did a great John job. Schaefer, yeah, that was really well done. It would 100% be Johnny and Jimmy. HBBBV, thank you. He says he'll get underdog when he turns 18. Okay. So that's telling right there. Okay, that is very telling, yes. Um, and bet John's Wi-Fi fix. Or hmm. HBBV, <laughs> you, do, you do you, my friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, and Niles, thank you. He says, still think they make it back to 500 this season. Yes. I say, absolutely. What do you say, Jim? And I say, yes. they don't make it to 500 this year. I say, yes, they do. It might take a little bit, but yes, they will. I mean, ask me, if they get to like four or five under, it'll be an interesting conversation. But there's so much baseball. Every team, including Oakland, won nine straight last year, didn't they? They did. At one point, they had like the best winning percent. Like, Longest win streak in baseball at one point. It's unbelievable. So, yeah, come on. Six and eight. It's early, guys. It's early. I know. I'm kidding. Shut up. Um, okay, so subscribe. You're on content for Padres fans. Um, we see you, so we appreciate you when you do subscribe. Thank you so much for your support of the channel. We want to get to 6,000 this month. We're 147 subscribers away. If you wouldn't mind helping us, we do appreciate that. Um, appreciate you smashing the like button for us. Thank you for following us at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Thank you for the super thanks. If you're here on replay, thank you for the memberships. New emojis coming potentially as soon as tomorrow. So thank you for the memberships. Support our partners, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. If you have an insurance need, he can save you money. He's a lifelong Padres fan. He's our title sponsor. Aura, you're looking to get healthier, go with their plant based nutritional products at ORA.organic. And again, play along with us. The former Padres play that could hit 100 to 1 tomorrow or 70 to 1. Use promo code PADSWRAP, P A D S W R A P. Get a 100% deposit match at underdogfantasy.com. Join us tomorrow on the radio at 3 p.m. or on YouTube for John and Jim. And then potentially tomorrow night at the 340 start, we'll figure it out. They win, yes. If they lose, if they we'll win, talk we'll about it. Tomorrow night. We're, we're, we're bandwagon. All right. Right, we're definitely bandwagon. We're bandwagon. All right, for Jim, I'm John. Uh, for Jimmy, I'm Johnny. Peace. What's up, brother? <laughs>